Good morning and welcome to worship at Marin Lutheran Church. A special welcome to folks who are with us today from all over the county, the country, and maybe even the world. In our liturgical calendar today, it is the second Sunday after Pentecost. Inter interestingly enough, in our liturgical calendar, you can divide the year into two six-month six -month groups. One is Advent through the season of Easter, which we just finished, and the other is the one we're just beginning, and that is June through November. Now, on this second Sunday after Pentecost, we hear Jesus in our Gospel reading talk about his mission, his purpose, what he has come here to do. And then we also hear how he commissions the disciples, his followers, us, to do the very same thing. Now our service today begins with our opening song, Rejoice in the Mission. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of compassion, you have opened the way for us and brought us to yourself. Pour your love into our hearts that overflowing with joy we may freely share the blessings of your realm and faithfully proclaim the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 19. The Israelites had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. 
Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me a priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. So Moses came, summoned the elders of the people, and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. The people all answered as one, Everything that the Lord has spoken, we will do. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel on this second Sunday after Pentecost is found in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, for they were harassed and helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles, first Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Dear God, take our hands and use them, take our feet and move them, and take our hearts and set them on fire. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, that was some gospel reading, wasn't it? In just 11 verses, we hear about faith healing and casting out demons three times. Jesus went about curing every disease and every sickness, gave them authority of our unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. What are we to make of all this talk? Are we expected to do all this stuff as well? Jesus has been on the move through the countryside, doing his healing and preaching and teaching. Great crowds are following him, crowds of people whom he finds harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. It's a predicament that moves Jesus to compassion. 
And so we might well expect Jesus, the wise and powerful Son of God, the caring and capable shepherd, to step into the vacuum for the sake of the sheep. And yet, that is exactly what Jesus doesn't do. Instead, Jesus commissions the disciples, the followers, us, to step into his shepherding shoes. The Messiah has come, it turns out, not to solve our humanity's problems, but to encourage and empower us to solve them. In effect, to recruit us into the work of love and redemption. Matthew's language is striking. Jesus commissions us, his followers, to go and do the very work that he's been doing. Just as John the baptizer's proclamation that the kingdom of heaven has come near is picked up and carried on by Jesus, now Jesus passes the baton onto the disciples. I think this story is typical of the way our God works in the world. God gracefully makes possible what initially seems impossible. And God does this by choosing unexpected, ordinary, even downright unlikely suspects. In this story, it's a small, motley crew of uneducated, unreliable disciples to carry on Jesus' mission. And that's the part of the point. Why does God so often operate this way? Well, to get our attention, I think, for starters. But the deeper purpose is to train our eyes and hearts and minds, strengthening our ability to hope against hope and therefore to act in times of adversity. Think of it this way. If God's grace often works through unlikely means and unexpected people, then even when the likely remedies are exhausted and the expected heroes falter, we can still be hopeful, tenaciously hopeful. And accordingly, precisely when we feel harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, precisely then God calls us to take up the shepherd's mantle ourselves to step into God's ongoing mission of healing and renewal. Finally, as you may know, the Gospel of Matthew distinctly emphasizes Jesus' Jewish identity. And so in our reading, we hear Jesus instruct the disciples to minister not to the Gentiles, but rather to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But we should also remember that over the course of Matthew's gospel, Jesus undergoes a transformation on this point, eventually telling his disciples in the very reading we heard last Sunday that God's salvation is for everyone. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. As Matthew tells it, the story of salvation is a story of wide, wider and wider circles of inclusion. First, Jesus' followers, then the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and ultimately everybody else to all nations. It's a story of love, love transcending the divisions we construct 
we construct along ethnic, racial, or religious lines. And this divide, transcending love, echoes powerfully with the protest for racial equity that we have experienced today in our county, in our country, and across the world. In the face of pandemic, or racism and inequality, or the climate crisis, or a broken relationship, or any number of challenges, progress can seem elusive, illusory, laughable, and maybe even impossible. But the good news of God this morning is that anywhere, anywhere love or justice seem laughable, we know the Spirit is already at work, calling the church to join her. It's not that the church may or may not participate in the mission of healing and renewal. The church is that mission. It may take some time and struggle and tenacity, but in the end, God will bless all of our efforts, and the world will be transformed. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Holy One, you bring us together and call us your own. Bless theologians, teachers, and preachers who help us grow in faith. Guide your church that we might be a holy people. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, we have created divisions you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who care for all forced to leave their homes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Bring relief to all afflicted with the coronavirus and all those isolated now more than ever. Strengthen caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need this day. We especially pray for all those we name out loud or hold in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. Where the sin of racism fractures our relationships, bring repentance and reconciliation. Free us for the difficult work ahead in our congregation and communities. Open our hearts for attentive listening so that our places of connection are filled with your spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy One, you bring all people to yourself. We give thanks for the holy people who have gone before us, especially Wolfgang Hurt and Jack Johnson. Sustain us in your mission until the day you bring us up to join the saints in light. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, O God, blessed Trinity. You are almighty, all wisdom, all truth. In you, our maker, is our endless bliss. You hold the universe tenderly, for you love everything you have made. You long for us to be one with you, beholding us as your children, innocent and lovable. <clears throat> and in your gracious goodness, you desire that all shall be made well. And now I invite you to raise your bread or cracker as we celebrate Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, as one community, let us eat of the bread of life. And now I invite you to raise up your cup of wine or grape juice. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As one community, let us drink of the cup of salvation. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. And now hear the blessing of the Almighty. God, the Creator, Jesus, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Oh, mm -hmm.
Now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage, hold fast to what is good, render no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, be of good courage, help the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, serve and love God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.